don't know if y'all saw that uh, Harvey Weinstein's conviction in New York got overturned. Yeah, no, it's, it's shocking. It's not just like clear that he did it. He did it more than people that do it do it. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? That's why he's an outlier. He literally has stats. You know? And I don't know. It's like you see, you see him and then you see like Cosby being out and everything. Like fully out. Like he's like out. Fully, you know. And it does just feel like if, you know, if, if, if women want accountability for men like this, you can't just depend on the justice system, you know? I'm gonna have to start probably killing. I really don't see any other way. Like, I'm like, I have a vested interest in you not killing. I'm a man, but still, I don't know. It just seems like there's no way around it. You know what I mean? Like, and honestly, if you did start killing, right? If you started killing a lot of the bad ones, that you could probably believe us when we say we're the good ones. <laughs> like, I'm, I'm alive, isn't that proof? <laughs> no, the women have killed me. <laughs> you might have a gash on the arm or something, but that's just, uh, you know, had to keep you in line. <laughs> no, no. I think I, I, you probably gonna have to do it. I really don't see any other way. Because, because uh, people talk about patriarchy and, and everything and sure i i understand but you also have to remember that like as men we're not all friends i'm also scared of dangerous men <laughs> you know what i mean and it's because they kill <laughs> so then if y'all kill too that's really the only way to equality you know what i mean like that's <laughs> In a sad but like poetic way, that's because even if y'all started killing indiscriminately, you couldn't do worse than men. <laughs> so just kill a little, like I okay. <laughs> I feel like y'all aren't rolling with what I'm saying, and that's fine. That's fine. This is this is a new idea for me too, okay? But I'm saying I thought about it a lot. <laughs> You know? <laughs> like, if I had a daughter, I'd buy her a knife. <laughs> maybe, maybe a gun, but definitely a knife. Because a knife, you can think about it. You know what I mean? Guns are too easy to be like, P -p -p oops. <laughs> you know, much harder to miss with a knife. You meant to poke who you poked, you know? I don't know. Because I think that as I say this, it sounds crazy obviously and that's good because it means that you're all like productive members of society and stuff but like but when you really think about it that's that's the score right like 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 alpha things are usually just being the most dangerous person around that's why when they tell you when you go to jail find the biggest dude and punch him in the nose like a shark or wh whatever they say but like <laughs> That's why they say that, because it's like that, that, that fear instills a calm, and the calm is safety. You know, like, like, like dangerous men are also scared, which is why they puff out their chest and act dangerous to get people off of them, you know? But if women started killing, <laughs> we'd all be a little bit, you know what I mean? Like, there'd still be cat calls, they'd just be quieter. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Feel like you pass by, but then they see they see that you brandish it, right? They see you pack it, and you pack in low, like you got a sawed off shotgun, just out in the open. They're like, that ass. <laughs> that was him. That's. I don't know, baby. Because I hear these stories, and I, and they're horrible. Like I have friends tell me about how. They've, they've put keys in between their fingers at night as they're walking to their car, you know? And I'm like, yeah, but if you do my thing. <laughs> I 
y'all are acting like I'm being unreasonable and I'm trying to help. <laughs> I, I've read a lot of history books. I'm just telling you what's going to work. <laughs> I'm just saying, you know, level the playing field of, of general fear and in a weird way, it might be a better world. <laughs> you know? Maybe it could work, you know? Like, like if, you, if you do it for long enough, it changes whole attitudes of like an entire culture, if, of everyone. Because then they'll be like, yeah, she might kill like who knows she might be a crazy one that kills you know but let's say the word is out that women kill now and they kill as much as men right now when you go in your boss's office and you close the door behind you and you ask for a raise <laughs> who knows maybe you kill or even just if, if the word gets around that women are really out here killing, indiscriminately, you know, crazy stuff, right? Because the way women do kill, I want to be clear about that. Women kill a lot, actually. <laughs> they just do it to, like, people who they know who they think deserve it. I'm talking about, like, <laughs> killing across the board. <laughs> killing because you upset, you know what I mean? If the word got out that women are just out here killing, I think you would hear like a pack of guys, right? A pack of guys is usually what women are afraid of. Four or five guys drunk walking down the street together, right? I've had my friends tell me that that's terrifying to them. Just whether it's going to be cat calls, whether it's going to be like cornering them, whether it's going to be something much, much worse, right? And it's because of the way that men are. It's because men kill there are men that do horrible things. I'm not saying that women don't, but just by the numbers, you know? So if, it, if word got out that women kill, you'd see those four or five guys drunk, walking around, singing their songs. La, 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 la. <laughs> right? But then they would hear the click of stilettos. <laughs> They look at each other like, bro, run! <laughs> <laughs> it could work. I, 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 I'll leave it alone, but also, I don't know, consider it. <laughs> I was stranded one time in Austin. And when I say strand, I mean like I, my flight was so delayed that I got to Austin and the airport was like closed, you know what I mean? And, and I was so hungry, but obviously every, every other thing was closed. And Austin didn't have the boom that it had now, right? Like Austin wasn't this like bustling place that everyone moved to post pandemic. Like it was just regular Austin, the way that the locals used to like it, you know what I mean? before the money came <laughs> and there was no food and so I was trying to like Uber Eats and like nothing was open it was crazy to the point where I don't know why I did it but I just left the hotel room and started walking I was like maybe I can just find something on foot right and I went down 6th street and like like 6th street was closed that's that's their Vegas <laughs> That strip of 6th Street is like everything's happening at some point, right? But it was so late that it was early. You know what I mean? And so I was walking and walking and finally I passed this taco truck and I was so excited. I was like, ah, oh, yes, finally, food. Because this is now an hour and a half at least after I got to the hotel, which is at least 40 minutes after I landed. So I've been hungry for a day. <laughs> And I, I run up to the taco truck and I see that there's bricks on either side of the taco truck. And then I realize that this taco truck is in an alley. <laughs> I don't know if you've ever had alley food before, <laughs> but it feels, it feels illegal when you order in it. Cause you're like, why aren't you out? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Cause this, 
I'm, I'm, I don't even know if I can describe this efficiently or no. The taco truck was basically just like, hey. <laughs> It wasn't even jutted out or anything. It's literally like in the alley, like, hey, we got tacos. <laughs> if you hungry. <laughs> and there's not much space in the alley either. Like I'm leaning up against brick, trying to be like, yeah, let me get a carne asada. <laughs> I order these tacos. Uh, I eat them and they do, they, they taste different than I've ever, they, they're, they're different in flavor that I've ever had before. These are truly alley tacos. <laughs> I found out what that meant with them. Like, and maybe I wouldn't have even noticed if the packaging had been different. Maybe if I wouldn't have even noticed if this was a parking lot, I'd be like, all right, they're a little dry, but whatever. The fact that it was in an alley though, I was like, no, nah, I'm gonna die. <laughs> I got a cactus taco. I remember this like it was yesterday. I got a cactus taco. I got, uh, what was it? I got, a, I got all vegetarian stuff. I got a cactus, I got a mushroom, and I got this like um, fried, I guess a fried mushroom as well. And so it was like cactus, regular mushroom, fried mushroom. And I ate all three tacos and they were, they very much taste like the, mid, the middle of two buildings. And <laughs> like, even as I was eating it, I was like, this, this flavor is floor. This is, <laughs> this is crazy. If I had eaten even 24 hours ago, I would not be eating this right now. But I was like, oh. And I ate it and I walked back to my hotel and I laid down. And as soon as I laid down, <laughs> my stomach was like, don't fall asleep. <laughs> No, we gonna be up tonight. <laughs> the worst part is that I had, <laughs> I had like a roommate in my hotel room because I was there for a festival. So I had a roommate in my hotel room who had got in the day before. So he didn't have any of these problems, right? He's like trying to sleep and my stomach keeping us both awake. Every time he sort of doze off, my stomach is snoring, right? And I got so sick. And it was, it, was a, it was a type of sick where you're not even like throwing up or anything. I was just sitting there sick, right? And I really thought I was gonna die because I started sweating. I was like, that should happen. It's not hot in here. That cannot be pouring sweat out of my body right now. I clearly ate poison. <laughs> and he's like, where'd you eat this taco? I was like, it was in an alley. He's like, you ate alley food? <laughs> He said it like it was a thing he knew about, like alley food was just part of life. I was like, I didn't know it was alley food until I was in the alley. <laughs> Don't judge me, I haven't eaten in 36 hours. And then I was just sweating to the point where I thought about going to the hospital, but I didn't out of embarrassment. I was like, I don't wanna. I don't want to go to the hospital now and be like, yeah, I, I think I had some bad tacos. They're like, where'd you eat? The, I'm like, oh, in an alley. Because I'm not going to lie. At that point, I feel like the hospital going to turn you away. Like, I feel like, no, we're not saving him. We only take care of people who don't deserve what happened to them. And so I was sitting there. I was really like, pouring sweat, feeling so sick, wishing I was going to throw it. Like, I, like, you almost pray for it. And I was just sitting there, and I, I, and I turned to my buddy, who's very annoyed with me, <laughs> because I'm not proud of it, but after a little while, like, after the first hour of stomach rumbling, I did start moaning. And that's... <laughs> and both of us hated that. Like, <laughs> my stomach was like... Brr, and then I was like, oh... <laughs> Uh, <laughs> it was like I was crying, but no tears were coming out. <laughs> and so I turned to him, I was like, I think I'm gonna die. <laughs> and under his breath, he's like, just please do it soon. Like, whatever you're gonna do. Please, just get it out of the way. 
And I told him, I was like, if I get sick tonight and I die, if anybody asks what happened, <laughs> tell them I got shot. <laughs> Mira, 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 mira,